A pneumatic system is a system that uses highly compressed air to transmit power. And one of the reasons why it's used in visual engineering, especially in high-speed filming applications, is the speed at which air is able to affect an actuator, aka a pneumatic cylinder. Now, in today's video, I will be taking you through the basics of such a system and ways in which you can use it to create really cool dynamic product videos. Now, this video is divided into chapters for easy navigation if you need to revisit it in the future. Now, let's start with the components of a pneumatic setup. As mentioned earlier, the medium used to transmit power is air. And for that, we need a pressurized air supply. So we need a compressor to compress or to pressurize that air and a reservoir or a pressure tank to store that air. Luckily and conveniently, most compressors come with a reservoir already attached. Now, when specifying a compressor, there are two things to pay attention to. One is the maximum pressure and two is the size of the storage tank. Now, you need to ensure that it can supply enough pressure, but you don't need to overspec it if the other components in the system is rated at a lower maximum. For example, the compressor that I use has a maximum pressure of 100 PSI, but the maximum operating pressure of this solenoid switch, which we'll come to later, is 116 PSI. If I had to buy another compressor though, I'd probably rate it at 116 PSI, so it matches to this. Now on the other hand, the size of the tank just really dictates how often it's gonna be need to be filled up if you're constantly using up that air pressure. Now this compressor that I have has a 24 liter capacity, which I find to be sufficient. And what you have to remember though, is usually when you set up a shot, it's a single momentous activation. And then you have to reset the product, you have to reset the shot, you have to reset the camera and the props and whatnot, right? Now, other features that you should consider when you get in a compressor can be things like how loud the compressor is, um, is it oil free and that sort of thing. Now, there's a pressure regulator at the outlet of the pressure tank where you can dial in how much pressure you want to feed into your pneumatic system. Usually, this is left at the maximum 100 PSI for me. Okay, so for this little setup that I have here for today, this is the feed from the compressor. So this orange line is going to be a feed. We have a shut off valve right here to control the flow. And this is the supply into the switch. So for purposes of this video, this is going to be our compressor just here. Okay, that's enough on compressors for now. Next, we need to add a direction control valve or a solenoid switch, a pneumatic solenoid switch. So think of this as a light switch. You switch it on, you get power, you switch it off, it goes away. Now, in this case, this is a five port two-way valve. So it's got five ports, one supply input from the compressor, two outputs for the actuator, and two vent ports. So the moment you connect an air supply to the switch, there is always air going through one of these output ports at any given time. That is until you activate this switch, which will then transfer the flow of air from one port to the next and vice versa. So depending on whether you want this piston to push or to pull, will determine which port is activated at this point. So currently air is being routed via this black tube to the top of the cylinder. And until I activate the switch just here, it'll switch the flow to the blue tube to the bottom of the cylinder, which pushes the piston up, pushes the rod up and extends it whilst this is still activated. As soon as I deactivate that or release the power from here, it reverts back to its original position and the air flows through the black and it then brings the piston back in. So speaking of the switch, I'm currently using this plunger to physically move the ports inside the switch just here to transfer air from one to the next. But ideally, in a, in a real case scenario, you're going to be wanting to use this 12 volt solenoid here to do that for you so you can activate the switch remotely. So I've attached a cable to this. I've wired this up to a 12 volt supply. As you can see, I'm just using a battery here and we can use the switch now. To remotely activate the switch. Now this switch doesn't just only control direction, it also controls the speed by utilizing these throttle valves on the exhaust ports of the switch. Remember this air that's at the top here needs to be displaced, it needs to be pushed away 
when you want to extend the piston. So once we have the airflow at the bottom of the piston, it pushes the piston up. The air at the top here now needs to be displaced or vented to atmosphere in order for that movement to take place. So the bottom line really is, depending on how fast we can get that air to move out of that space, depends on how fast the piston is going to move in that direction. So that is directly controlled by these valves. So these are called throttle valves or air chokes. So what you're doing essentially here is restricting the amount of airflow going out of that vent as the piston moves up. So you can adjust this from anywhere from fully closed to fully open, and that will directly regulate the speed at which this goes in. And that is true as well for the retraction. So if you wanted this to open up really fast, but come back really slow, and that's the compressor kicking in right now. So yeah, that was the compressor just kicking in because we used up the air and it needs to refill the tank. So as I was saying, if we wanted to reverse that, say we wanted it to go up really slow, but we wanted it to come back really quickly. Then we just adjust the port and we have that motion. If we wanted to go quickly both ways, again, it's the same principle. We open both of the ports and we have the really fast action. So depending on how far your switch is going to be situated from your cylinder, these pipes might be longer. And so that air has a longer time to vent, to travel out. So remember, the quicker that air can be displaced to atmosphere, the quicker the piston can move. And for that, there is another solution as well. So you can have these throttle valves attached directly to the piston themselves, and you can reduce or increase the uh, airflow using the same method here. So it'll be a lot quicker if you had the throttle valves connected directly to the cylinder. And if you have it set up like this, then you don't necessarily need to have these even in play. You can totally remove these or just open up to the fully open position. So these aren't necessary for the operation of the switch. Now, next in line is the actuator. Now, there are many different types of actuators, but I'll delve into those in part two of this series. This is the most common type of air actuator, the pneumatic cylinder. Now, this is a double acting cylinder because there are two ports that are used to control the movement on both sides of the piston. You can also find single acting cylinders with a spring return mechanism. Now, these come in different sizes and are defined by two main properties. So one, is the bore, which is really how fat this is, and two is the stroke, which is the length of this rod. And these two properties do have an effect on the force profile of these uh, cylinders. So just to put that in perspective, this right here is a 10 by 100, which means it's got a bore of 10 mil, and it's got a stroke of 100 millimeters. This one is a 20, so this is twice as fat as this. So, you know, twice the diameter of, of this one. And it's got, a, but it's got the same stroke. So it's got the same 100 mil length stroke on this one. So let's do a quick little experiment to see how the size really affects the performance of these two actuators. Now, before I do this test, I'm gonna let you guys guess in the comments below, which one of these is gonna push it the furthest. Let me know, pause the video, head to the comments below, let me know your guess, place your bets. So whilst we're waiting guys, does anybody know why Instagram decided to promote reels and to push reels and then you post reels and then no one sees your reels? Some real BS. So on the 20 by 100, we're gonna place a projectile just on there like this and we're gonna activate it and see what happens. Okay, and that's what we're getting from this one. So now we're gonna try this little guy. This is the 10 by 100. I'm gonna see the effect of that one. Yeah, so I think this little guy is the clear winner in this little experiment. Now, there are various methods of mounting these and it really depends on how you're gonna be using it. Now, I've found that these mounting brackets are rather pricey comparatively. So I can't understand how a bracket like this can cost more than a cylinder like this. So try to find some other ways of actually attaching these or mounting these to your setups. Okay, so I'm gonna briefly discuss a couple of ways that you can mount this. Now, 
depending on your application, depending on what you're using, it's going to be different. So here's just a couple of ways that you can do this. As I mentioned before about these brackets, so you can attach the bracket to the collar of this cylinder and mount it any way that you like. These are just bolted on to this uh, plate right here and off you go. As you can see for this one, it's just a couple of tie wraps on here that's holding that in place and that is uh, sufficient for that. So you could think about various ways you can do that. Now, when it comes to the end of the rods, the end of the rods are threaded and they have different diameters. For example, uh, this one is a M8 thread. So, you know, you can attach a M8 nut on here and just screw a plate at the top. For example, this is something that I found at the hardware shop that um, is actually used for rooting pipe or fixing pipes to the outside of walls. And incidentally, it has an M8 and an M10 thread insert in here. So this could work by just screwing this on here. And then you can then further attach a plate to the top of this where you can use to then attach something like this, for example. So if we just unscrew this, I've got one of these attached to the bottom of here. And then I can just simply screw it on. There I have uh, a holder for whatever I'm placing in here. So then, you know, kind of stay in place for this to operate like that. So when we come down to something, you know, as, as small as this, where, you know, there isn't a, a ready-made or solution as such, you just kind of have to make it up as you go. So this has got nuts. You can screw this onto the threaded part of the rod. And I'm just going to put this through one of these holes and secure it to the top like this. And yeah, there we have a platform. Again, you can attach anything that you want to the top of this. All right, so this is just a launcher rig that I've built and I've built two of these and they're made from aluminum extrusion. So T-profile, which is pretty easy to put together. Um, they're, they're not the cheapest, but they're actually so versatile. So you can reconfigure and set these up, you know, in various number of different ways. So anyway, this is our um, activator here. We've got the switch same components of the system we just discussed same way of attaching you know a container on here so you can place whatever you want in here and essentially just launch it in that direction now i've got two of these identical so essentially if i put them opposite to each other whenever they launch you know whatever it is i'm launching hopefully theoretically they should meet somewhere in the middle so that's the purpose of this and this can be re reconfigured as well so we can uh, put it upright and have it launching stuff going vertically as well so again you know so many different ways of putting these things together depending on what it is that you're looking to achieve um, i'm probably going to be doing a video on this if you want to see a video of this build in particular i'll just do a separate video about how i created this rig so let me know in the comments below if that's something that you'd want to see last but not least air pipes or pneumatic tubes. So these are used to transport all of this air around the system. Now they come in various different colors and are specified by the inner and outer diameters. So these ones has an outer diameter of six millimeter and four millimeter on the inside. Now it's important though to match the outer diameter to the connections that you're going to be using. So these ones, these connectors are designed to accept six millimeter outer diameter tubes and they just fit nicely and snugly inside like this. And these quick release push fit connectors makes it easy to connect, disconnect and reconfigure your setup as required. And it's pretty much as easy as this. So they're easy to cut, they're easy to work with. You just cut a nice clean piece off like that square and you're ready to go into the connector. So that's the theory out the way. Now, let me show you how I've used pneumatics in my projects to push, pull, blast, launch, drop, and believe it or not, clean. Yes, it's a good tool to get rid of those annoying specks of dust on your products.
Now, here's a few good tips to follow when setting up your own system. Use PTFE thread seal tape around your connectors, around the screw threads, so you can avoid leaks in your system. Don't over tighten your connectors. They're easily broken and you can break them in your cylinder. And thirdly, be mindful of compressed air. Compressed air can kill. So don't point it directly at your skin or anyone else's for that matter. And that is it for this video, guys. I mean, hope you really learned something and now have the confidence to give it a go. I'm going to be bringing a part two sometime in the near future where I'm going to be delving into other types of pneumatic actuators and what they can bring to your setup. So I'll put links in the description below to some of these parts that you can find online. They're affiliate links, so that means that I get a little bit back if you do make a purchase. So until the next one, stay safe, keep pushing. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.